for the journey is long. The journey, the journey, 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 the journey is long. Come with me for the journey is long. Come with me for the journey is long. Come with me for the journey is long. The journey, the journey, 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 the journey is long. Am I asking you to help with this? No, it is. 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 No, Merci and thank you. I'd like to start off by acknowledging and giving thanks to the Mississauga Nations of New Credit for allowing us to come together today on their original land. I'd also like to thank Good Friday Walk for Justice organizers 
for inviting me to this important annual event. Chi miigwech to everyone who has come out in solidarity today and in friendship to recognize the injustice done upon Aboriginal women in Canada. My name is Crystal Maline. I'm of mixed Aboriginal and European heritage. Today I represent myself and Native Women's Resource Centre of Toronto. Our centre supports Aboriginal women and their children across Toronto. We also stand together to build our collective capacity to strengthen our communities both here in Toronto and across Canada. I've been asked to speak about missing and murdered Aboriginal women in Canada. It was suggested that I may want to provide a list of names of all the women who are gone, but I can't do this. Without the context of their individual stories, without the permission of their family and friends in telling their stories, the value of their beautiful lives are diminished. However, we can look around today and see how many of us are here. Now imagine that all these people standing around you are your grandmothers, aunties, cousins, sisters, nieces, daughters, and close friends. Now triple that number that you see here today, and that's the number of Aboriginal women and girls who have been brutally taken from all of our communities. Sometimes, like many of you here today, I'm afraid to look too deep or ask difficult questions, and so I end up asking questions that lie on the surface. Questions like, why is it that we have terms such as missing and murdered Aboriginal women, stolen sisters, and the violent victimization of Abor Aboriginal females, highways of tears, and how is it that we uh, tolerate this and accept it in our society? Never would we accept high murder rates of young hockey players, or accept that hundreds of ballerinas have gone missing within my lifetime. How can 600 women and girls be murdered and go missing without government, communities, and citizens viewing this as a national emergency? What exp explanation can justify the fact that young Aboriginal women are five times more likely to die of violence than non-Aboriginal women in Canada? It's too easy to believe that the Picton Farm trage tragedy in BC was an exceptional case where First Nations women were targeted. It's too easy because the phenomena of violence against Aboriginal women happens in every pocket across Canada, and it happens daily, and it hasn't decreased. There are 70 known cases of missing and murdered Aboriginal women here in Ontario. And since police investigations are not required to ask whether the person is Aboriginal, it is believed that the numbers are much higher. Only 50% of the murders have been cleared. Children are left behind. In Ontario, 90% of Aboriginal women who are murdered or have gone missing are mothers. The families are left to pick up the pieces without acknowledgement or support. We need to relearn our shared history to understand why violence against Aboriginal women continues to exist. Here's what we need to relearn. Colonization, then and now. Aboriginal ways of life were a threat to colonization of Aboriginal land. Prior to contact, Aboriginal women had power in their communities. They were leaders, they were decision makers, and they were honored as life givers and respected for their vital roles in their communities. Colonialism created a history of loss for Aboriginal people. A loss of land, loss of traditional and sustainable livelihoods, loss of language meant a loss of expression, ways of knowing tool created by the government to ensure that the inherent power of Aboriginal women be torn away. Government controlled, control meant women lost their traditional roles and therefore the power that they originally held. They went from owning property to becoming the property of the government. Assimilation policies. Through aggressive and severe assimilation policies, women also lost their children to residential schools. Without the community's teachings, without parents, and without a role in their community, women's children were forced to grow up in a system of abuse and neglect. Left to spiral downwards, 
downwards to all forms of violence. When violence, pain, and shame become normalized, this is what gets passed on. As extended families struggled to keep communities together, provincial child welfare authorities viewed these families as lesser than the nuclear white families and made the choice to forcibly remove and often wipe out entire communities of their children and place them up for adoption and in foster homes of non-Aboriginal families. Ways of coping with unbearable loss, despair and hopelessness helped to create addictions and dependencies that were no, not part of any traditional ways of life, being and values held by Aboriginal people across Canada. Racism and sexism, systematic racism, prejudice and stereotypes that began during first contact are still well woven in Canadian fabric. Hatefulness is active violence and furthers the need to find ways of coping, often in ways that are familiar rather than empowering. Access to life enhancing services. Never mind hurt and degradation of spirit, racism means doors are literally closed to Aboriginal women and their families. It's easy for violence to find us when we have nowhere safe to go. Racism and sexism severely limit the access to education, health, and employment, and our ability to carve out a life that is honorable to our multiple ways of being. It diminishes our ability to advocate on our children's behalf become self-sufficient and stand up for our indisputable human rights as women and as Indigenous people. We are all, we all must recognize all of our relations and our connectedness to all things. We are all responsible for our histories, representations and our relationships. Truth and reconciliation will come when non-Aboriginal people and First Nations, Métis and Inuit can meet in the middle and recognize our shared history, our shared pain and the need for mutual healing. All nations on this land have suffered and continue to suffer when we fail to see our connectedness, never knowing what could have been an alternative history. Learning to come to one mind may take generations but we still need to try and move on in parallel paths together as often depicted in the representation of our wampum belts. We all need to celebrate Aboriginal resiliency, the enthusiasm, grit, and determination of our growing youth population. Honoring, honoring Aboriginal women for their courage to heal and acknowledging the strength it takes to live each day. Acknowledging also the children and elders for their gifts and teachings. Recognizing the need for ceremonies, powwows, language, dance, drumming and storytelling. Gifts that allow all of us to come together, celebrate, give thanks and learn again. We all need to demand more. Demand that the Canadian government honour the 2010 official endorsement of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Remind the Government of Canada that their June 11, 2008 apology to the former Indian residential school survivors is meaningless if they will not address the, the residual effects of their policies that have been left on the survivors and their children and their grandchildren. Recognize that the Indian Act has and always will be a tool of oppression. And finally, support Aboriginal and ally initiatives to end the violence against Aboriginal women. Come out to Allen Gardens Park on October 4th and light a lantern at the annual Sisters in Spirit Vigil. Meet us each year on February 14th rally outside the Toronto Police Headquarters for a strawberry ceremony. Support the organizations and communities that are working with the families of missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Come out to the Truth and Rec Reconciliation events here in Toronto, May 31st to June 2nd at the Toronto Council Fire. And finally, never let your fear or feelings of guilt stop you from doing what you know is right. Now, Amy Gutch.
Igual de David. Luego hace planta de...